Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and part two of the Lafayette AMFM HB940 CB radio and possibly the worst condition radio that I've ever bought but in part one we give us a quick test we found out the signal meter wasn't working but it did seem to receive and transmit needs a good alignment and obviously this case needs sorting out and we're going to add some extra channels onto it as well so let's get started so the signal meter problem seems to be RV3 has fell apart so that should be a nice easy fix just need to replace that potentiometer but first let's have a look at this microphone so I've taken it apart and now we're going to give it a good drowning in some foam cleaner and hopefully that will start to remove the grime that's on this hopefully we can save this microphone So just let the foam cleaner do its work and you can see as we've turned it over the dirt is already starting to come off I don't want to spray any foam cleaner actually into the microphone element but we're going to drown all the plastic works in this foam cleaner let it do its let it do its job for a second so after a bit of scrubbing with the brush and as you can see the amount of dirt that's on the cloths this is what we're up to at the moment and it's looking considerably better so we'll get rid of these dirty cloths so we we'll just need to reassemble it everything's nice and clean actually feels safe touching it again but whilst we're in there just put a little dropper switch cleaner into the PTT switch just in case And there's our microphone back together and apart from a little bit of rust on the five pinned in plug it's in not too bad condition so I'm quite happy with that so let's get on to repairing the broken signal meter so let's move the FM board out of the way so we can actually get down to it there's our broken RV3 its top seems to be missing don't know whether that's just fell off or somebody's been messing with it but there's RV3 on the schematic diagram it's a 20k so we'll find a 20k and put one in so let's get this old one unsoldered Only two legs are connected, so that's fine. And let's get the remains of it out of the radio. There's one part. And there's the other bit. 
hole in my box of potentiometers. We have a nice 20k. We'll just have to bend the legs a little bit to make it fit. But that should be fine. So there's the new potentiometer in. So let's set the signal meter. So we're on minus 70 dB, channel 1 high band. This should be just above S9. So there's our receive signal. And we'll move it up to just above S9. And that should be close enough. So that's our signal meter fixed. Okay, now let's do some frequency alignment on a proper counter. So first off mid band, because we're altering the 10 to 40, we do this first. So 26965. Yep, looking good. Now, low band. I think this crystal is definitely a little bit tired as it wouldn't go up very far. So I'll work on that in a minute. We'll go on to high band see if that can be pulled in that's looking better Twenty-seven, four, one, five. that'll do nicely just put it on a slower gate time get it as close as we can very nice So let's deal with this low band. So what I've had to do with the low band is I've changed the loading capacitor from a 33 picofarad to a 22 picofarad, which is there. And hopefully that might pull the crystal a little better. And yeah, it has. Unfortunately, I can't get it bang on. 515. I don't want to adjust the loading crystal any further. Uh, the loading capacitor, should I say, any further. So we'll leave it at that. We'll just recheck all our frequencies again. Do one last quick alignment. So twenty six nine six five, bang on. Back onto high band. Yep, 27415, that's good. Go back onto low band. Now I'm not going to get this any higher than this. So that'll have to do. But the two main bands anyway, mid and high band, they're bang on. So, out with the PLLO2AG. First week of 1988 code. And we're going to be fitting one of my modification boards just for UK 40. And this one is actually using the MC145106 PLL chip as found in the Unidens. Just some boards I've been experimenting with. Just as a complete PLL replacement board. So we'll see if this works 
in this radio. So we're just going to be using this just for UK 40 readout. And we'll get this soldered in. There, nicely done. Now, on this radio, because of phase wine, because of this PLL chip, we need to alter a component in the loop filter. And this is R2. And from my tests, we're actually changing that to a 220 ohm. You can see this is the PD line that feeds the VCO. So we're going to change R2 and that solves the phase wine. Now for the UK offset, I'm going to be using one of my offset boards and I've neatly mounted it underneath the crystal board so the wires are as short as possible to the crystal. keeps it out of the way and keeps it nice and neat and that should sort out our UK offset now we need to find a suitable switch for the UK 40 so we're going to use the CBPA switch so on the center pin of the CBPA switch we've got 13.8 volts which we will be using so I've disconnected the three wires that enable PA that are not going to be used and I'll trace those back and remove them as they're not going to be needed anymore. So there's our switch wired up. We've got our UK FM side and we've got our power to the offset board whilst on UK FM. Now let's get rid of the 41 to 80 display. That's nice and simple. Just remove this wire. And connect it on top of the blue wire. And that's our 41 to 80 disabled. Yep. Now to switch clean all the switches. So luckily down those little gaps in the front there actually go inside the potentiometers. So I've gone along and I've squirted in and worked them in. And I've actually done the switches as well. So now they're not crackling anymore. So, squelch pop. Let's do that. So we're going to be using the same technique as the standard 40 channel squelch pop, which is put a capacitor across Q13, which is the collector and the emitter. And there's our capacitor in place. And no more squelch pop. Excellent. Now onto the cases. Now I think we're going to have to get brutal with these cases. Because I don't think. There can be really saved so angle grinder flap disc A 
this seems to make short work of all that rust. Now, I could have really done this properly by putting body filler onto the case and smoothing it out and spray painting it but that would have took a very 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 long time to do so we're going to try a different way of covering this radio up and it's only the case so as long as it looks kind of presentable it's better than it originally was As you can see, this flap disc gets it down to pair metal, nice and easy. Like I say, the proper way would be to put body filler on it, but I just haven't got the time to do that. So there, taken down to bare metal. I've used a wire brush to get inside the speaker grill. And there's our bare cases. So I've used some Fablon sticky back plastic to cover the case. As you can see, it doesn't cover up all the blemish it blemishes but I think it's turned out a lot better than what it was so from a very very dirty poorly looking radio into something that's in not too bad condition the front's in good condition the case is not too bad now Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I do have a Patreon, Facebook group. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next episode.